Evening, everyone. Can all hear me okay? Great. So I'm going to talk about something here um, slightly different, probably for many of you. Uh, so let's go ahead and start off with um, how many of you here actually work on network devices? Okay, actually far more than I was actually expecting out of this. Then next question, how many of you actually um, have heard of Cumulus Networks? Oop. All right, that's not too bad. Okay, uh, then how many of you guys have actually used and or heard of Vagrant? All right, good. All right, so then this will actually probably be um, pretty familiar with you. Essentially, we're gonna start combining these uh, ones together here with this talk. Um, and then hopefully you guys have all heard of Ansible. Good, because that's gonna be the basis of uh, how I'm actually going to pull this off here today. So what we're gonna actually talk about is bringing uh, network orchestration and automation together. Now, oftentimes these two topics don't uh, typically um, meld well together. Uh, networking teams oftentimes are a bit uh, reticent to actually move towards automation. So I'm here essentially to talk about how this can be done, both in baby steps and actually more advanced cases here of, of truly moving, the net, uh, uh, moving networks towards continuous integration and continuous development. So to do this, um, what I'm talking about here is mostly general concepts. Uh, for the sake of an example here, I'm actually going to uh, use uh, Cumulus Networks devices, which I'll talk a little bit about here. Uh, and to do this, this is actually going to be a live demo. So I'll explain what I'm doing here uh, shortly, but I wanna kick this off because it takes a little while to run. So I'm going to go ahead and add a layer two domain to this network. And let's find out if I can go ahead and check in my commit. And of course, it's going to ask me for my username and password. So you guys can just ignore this. Um, it's nice that it's recorded right now so that um, I will be changing my API token here after this session. But that'll kick it off. Let's go ahead and get back to the talk. And I'll show you what I'm doing here uh, in just a bit. Okay, so what we're talking about here is network orchestration. Uh, and um, what I'm gonna show you is essentially a continuous integration and also for the adventurous amongst you, uh, also doing a continuous deployment uh, in data center networking environments here, right? And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm currently spinning up a staging environment. Uh, and if all goes well, I'll actually make changes to a production network environment as well at the same time. And underlying all of this is uh, basically cumulus network switches. Uh, so cumulus networks, for those of you that don't know, uh, we're a vendor that makes a network operating system. So the server environment's been doing this obviously for 20 years now, right? You no longer buy your servers from the same companies that you buy your operating system from. For some reason, the networking space, this concept is very slow to come around. So you can go out now and buy various uh, network switches from a wide variety of hardware vendors. And then you can go out to the market and essentially find a network operating system that runs on those switches that does everything that you want from a wide variety of vendors as well. Various open source packages or commercially supported ones like Cumulus. Uh, and so Cumulus basically, it's a, it's a standard Linux kernel that's running inside the boxes. Uh, it's a standard Debian based distribution that's running inside of these. Um, and on top of that is an open source routing stack uh, that's called free range routing now. Um, many of you have probably heard about Quagga in the past. Uh, essentially Quagga got forked about two years ago and all the development has made it into free range routing ever since. 
And essentially everything that we're doing is um, uh, open source uh, networking uh, projects all brought together into a supportable network operating system. Uh, and uh, for the network engineers here in the room, there's a modern command line interface. So it looks to you just like any other root or vendor that you're used to. Uh, for those of you that are interested in Linux and automation, it's a Linux box, a uh, standard Linux box uh, that you can interact with as well. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Network command line for those that are uh, still working on you know, their CCIEs and taking advantage of that. And for slowly moving over towards trying to bring the network towards automation, then you've got a fantastic standard Linux distribution that you can take advantage of it as well. So, everything that I'm doing here is based on open source. Uh, Cumulus basically upstreams everything that it's doing uh, into various open source packages. So we're contributing straight to the Linux kernel. So the VRF functionality that everyone takes advantage of right now inside uh, the Linux kernel was developed by Cumulus and just upstreamed. Uh, but there's also other packages, more networking specific. So Oni is probably a good example. For those of you in the server world, you're familiar with Pixie, right? The ability to boot up a, a server and load any type of operating system on it. Oni is basically the, the equivalent in the networking world, right? It's a bootloader that allows you to boot up a switch and over the network load any type of network operating system that you want on the switch and boot up its configuration and everything as well. Uh, over the network. So we're actively basically upstreaming everything that we do to make sure that they're all going to be taken advantage of. And so you can take advantage of these and, and run, for instance, the free range routing stack on your servers as well uh, to bring networking capabilities um, you know, down to the host uh, at the same time. Now to do my demo here, uh, what I'm going to do is actually spin up a virtual environment. Uh, to do this, Cumulus has a free uh, virtual uh, instance that you can download freely and run. So it's a switch. It works the exact same way as running this on physical hardware. One of the nice things about this is if you've ever delved into the world of virtual instances in the networking space, the kernel of many of the solutions oftentimes is proprietary. Uh, and so they have to do all kinds of magic underneath the hood to actually do layer two type functionality on them. And so the virtual instance doesn't work exactly quite the same way as the physical instance does. Since we're working with the standard Linux kernel here, what you get virtually is the exact same thing as what you get on a physical switch. So it's great for doing test environments to actually uh, replicate what you have in production and really get some confidence that your test environment actually is working the same way uh, as your production environment would. So this is free to download. Uh, you can spin up, it's a great learning uh, way for anyone uh, to spin up a networking environment as well. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about network orchestration, <laughs> right? So as an example of how not to do network orchestration, uh, I don't know if you guys saw this headline here in, uh, it was May, in, May 2016. So JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency, um, had a satellite that was orbiting Mercury, I believe. And uh, they went and actually did a, um, uh, a software package push to it. Uh, and the push had some bad data inside of it. And unfortunately, uh, two of the sensors on the uh, probe essentially did not agree. It caused it to start spinning, and consequently, basically, it destroyed itself in orbit and just turned into uh, debris floating around. So not quite the best way to do orchestration and automation, but it is a lesson essentially in the power of this, right? Automation is a way to break your network faster. And so bringing in some uh, test into this is probably one of the most important parts of this. And this is oftentimes one of the parts that's most lacking in networking environments uh, of bringing automation into this. Automation without the test often, oftentimes is just introducing more risk into the environment than actually giving a lot of benefit. So 
uh, from an automation stand, uh, from an orchestration standpoint, right, we're going to take advantage of Ansible here, which I'll um, show you here what I'm doing with uh, my various Ansible playbooks. Um, but important parts of this really from a concept standpoint, right, is moving network engineers over towards uh, infrastructure as code. Uh, which is typically a new concept to most of the traditional network engineers, right? Bringing them over to checking in code into a Git repository or something like that uh, and using build tools. That's all quite a learning curve that oftentimes you have to do in baby steps. So we'll talk a little bit about what that means in, from a networking standpoint. Uh, but also important then is telemetry information verifying that essentially the network is working the way that you want it to, right? So unit and system test type information that you want to actually get from the network itself. Um, and then finally, some continuing, continuous integration workflows. Uh, so we'll go ahead and talk through each one of these here. So question, how many of you recently made a network change? Right. How many of you uh, have made network changes that have gone completely flawless and never had an issue? <laughs> this is the reason why uh, it's probably good to start taking these slow steps over towards um, automation, but more importantly, the testing side of this, right? Trying to understand that a network change that you make actually is going to have the intended effect, but also not cause any unintended consequences along the way. So uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment. I'm assuming most of you here in the room probably know the concepts around this. Uh, I'll just touch here very briefly on this. Uh, so continuous integration, right? We're talking about essentially spinning up a test environment, right? That, that mimics the production environment uh, so that you can actually test things before actually putting them into production. From a networking standpoint, very, very few people actually take advantage of this. And this has been the part that's uh, uh, the networking side of the house is, is, is a few years behind, let's say, uh, on bringing this uh, to their skill set. Um, continuous deployment, on the other hand, then, is actually having the tools go and push this straight into production. So continuous deployment in a networking world, almost no one does this. We do have a few customers out there brave enough to do this, but for the most part still, when you're actually making changes to a production environment, you still want that human there during a maintenance window at some coordinated time, talking to the applications and server teams to make sure that things have gone smoothly. And so it's a long path over towards doing continuous uh, deployment. Continuous integration, however, you can take advantage of this right now. And you can take advantage of this quite uh, easily. And oftentimes find uh, and avoid just common missteps and configuration mistakes before they actually get pushed into production environments. So to actually do this, first step is introducing in uh, some tools. So typically bringing in build tools, familiar of course with many of you here, but for networking people, these are completely new concepts, right? So be it, uh, you know, Jenkins, um, I'm gonna actually use uh, GitLab here for my demonstration. Um, but whatever the build tool is you use, right? It's job in life essentially from a networking standpoint is uh, to actually take a copy of the production network as it exactly exists right now, spin it up, then run a series of unit and system tests on that networking environment after you've made a change. So you push out an Ansible playbook, you make whatever network changes you want to make on the test environment, you run through a series of checks on that environment, and then assuming everything passes, then you can go into your change maintenance window with some more confidence that uh, everything that you're going to do not only accomplishes what you want, but doesn't have any unintended consequences along the way. So typically, very simple workflow, 
You've got your network as it exists today over on the left hand side. You take your network device configurations, you make a change to them. So flat files typically sitting on a server somewhere. You check those uh, changes into a code repository. Typically people are using Git uh, to do this these days. And then your build tool goes and spins up a test environment, does its checks. If everything works well, then you validated it and you've got the same Ansible playbook that you can use again to actually run on the production environment when you're ready to. If everything fails, then you've done all of this without touching any of the existing network. So this is all risk-free from that standpoint. These are all things that you can take advantage of right now. Uh, and are actually, uh, it's not a big learning curve towards moving towards this type of setup. So um, a bit more specifically about some of the details of this, about essentially how the world exists now for networking uh, versus essentially moving towards trying to automate this, right? So most test environments are typically physical labs. Those physical labs are never a representation of the production environment, right? The, the switches are never the same hardware because you can't justify spending hundreds of thousands of pounds on um, the same in, uh, switches and routers that actually exist in production. Um, they drift over time. Right? There's no synchronization between what actually exists in the production environment and what exists in the lab. Someone's still in the lab to actually do some other test, right? to test out a new product or vendor or something like that. So any change that you do typically in a lab scenario is never quite representative uh, and hence the reason why you still end up having production outages. So it doesn't really add a lot of value in it. And then also, if you're trying to bring in automation, uh, then you're typically talking about um, you know, specialized proprietary you know, vendor-specific tools, um, APIs, et cetera. So I'm going to bring into this essentially various open source ways that you can do continuous uh, integration. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about first the network. So what I have running right now uh, is I'm spinning up this network environment. So this is a typical leaf and spine flaws based architecture. So I've got a few spine switches. I've got some leaf switches and exit switches. I've got various Ubuntu boxes that are sitting down there as servers hanging off of them so that I actually have servers that I can run tests and do, you know, send application traffic from in this. And then I've got a separate out-of-band management environment here as well so that I can run my Ansible playbooks and do all my various tests on this environment and make sure that everything's nice and happy. So this is the environment that's currently spinning up right now in the background. Actually, multiple copies of this. And let's talk about um, kind of the hard part of this. So spinning up a test environment actually uh, is pretty straightforward. Uh, the difficulty of moving towards automation in the networking space is bringing concepts that have been around in the application development space for a long time, right? Unit and system tests, and essentially bringing those over to the networking world. Oftentimes the networking teams do not have an understanding of what applications flow in the network, right? Typically how this works is you're the networking team. Everything's working now. You get a request from the application team to say, open me up some ports on a firewall, add a VLAN, bring up this new server, right? Add this port configuration. And then essentially they do that configuration and then they walk away and they never think about it anymore, about what those applications are that are flowing across the network and where that traffic needs to go back and forth between. But that information is ultimately very, very valuable here uh, for them trying to get an understanding of if they make changes to the networking environment, what breaks? If I make a change and add something new, is that going to break something that exists in the network? And that's the hard part of this. And that's the bit that you need to slowly build up over time. You can start with baby steps and do some basic unit and system tests, and then slowly add up a library so that you get to the point of understanding what are the business critical applications running 
so that every time you make a change to the network environment, you can verify that not only the new change got made properly, but you haven't broken any existing applications running on that network environment as well. So some examples of this, for instance, are, um, you know, you can start off simple. I've made my change, is BGP up everywhere? Are all my routes propagating everywhere? Are all the MAC addresses for all the servers being learned? Is VXLAN and eVPN all working properly? Right, at least a sanity check to make sure that everything in the networking environment is still the same way that it should be, right? And effectively just do a diff between the entire network of before and afterwards and essentially ensure that everything that, that should be unaffected uh, is still unaffected in this. So writing those system tests are something that we have some more advanced people doing, but at a minimum, most networking teams aren't even doing the basics here, right? Verify that the entire environment's working after a specific change, or even better, go ahead and spin this up in a test environment first, test it all out and make sure everything looks good in that test environment uh, beforehand, before actually uh, pushing those changes to production. One helpful part of this, this is the only real vendor specific part I'll throw into this. Stimulus has agents that run on the network switches to provide telemetry information. The idea here is each of the switches, um, essentially what you do is you subscribe to the, um, uh, the Netbus link um, for uh, information going to the Linux kernel, and you can keep track of uh, interface status, um, routes being learned, MAC addresses, et cetera, and stream all that information essentially in real time back to a centralized location so that you have a data set to be able to run end-to-end -end network checks on. So you don't have to run around the network and essentially log into each device and check everything individually. You can recreate the state of the entire network from a central management location and run all kinds of series of checks on this uh, as well. So essentially, uh, NetQ is just an agent that runs on the switches to stream everything, right? So moving people away from the evils of SNMP-based network polling and trying to actually bring people over towards a bit more scalable telemetry type model of, of capturing not only statistical information, but much more importantly, network state information, right? What hosts exist, what routes exist in the network, what's the state of all the protocols in the network uh, as well. So one of the advantages of this is NetQ essentially then uh, allows you to be able to check um, state of protocols, right? Are all my BGP adjacencies up? Are all my VXLAN tunnels up? Uh, so it's easy uh, state verification to be able to do these unit and system tests uh, to make sure that the network is functioning essentially the way that you want it to uh, before and after a change. So what I've got here running in the background, uh, I don't know how many of you have actually worked with GitLab and the runners before. So yeah, how many of you actually have used GitLab and runners? Okay, not bad. Um, I spent all weekend long rebuilding which server this was running on and fighting with GitLab runners, which are horrible to try and debug, I have to say, on trying to figure out why things don't work. Um, but essentially what this is doing is um, on, uh, I've got two servers running. So one server essentially is I'm spinning up a staging environment and the other server is actually running my production environment. So I've got uh, the production environment that, that networks up and running, it's been running for weeks and I wanna make a change to it. So essentially what I've done is I've taken a clone of my uh, production environment I spun that up on another server with Cumulus VX, so virtual instances of that production environment. Uh, and then uh, I've gone here at the start of the demo. If you guys saw me, I went in, I edited a file. I essentially added a, uh, a new layer two domain into the network. I went and then pushed that change to GitLab. That kicked off my runners. And essentially what that's, uh, that's done is copy the production environment, uh, spin up the exact same 
physical configuration as what's happening in production. Uh, then do a series of unit and system tests on that network environment. And assuming that all of that is actually then passed, then rerun that same Ansible playbook uh, on the production environment. And so we'll verify here shortly whether or not my demo actually worked. Um, I'm at the mercy of GitLab and the runners on this one because it's, uh, it's a bit um, finicky when it comes to timeouts and various things I've come to learn. So to do that, essentially, um, this is what it looks like. Um, this is my YAML file. Um, this is a simplified version of it. Uh, I've got a link to this uh, repository. Um, pretty much most of what Cumulus does, there's um, GitHub and GitLab repositories of full working examples of all of this. So we've done all the hard work of essentially doing all of the wonderful testing from an Ansible playbook standpoint to do uh, checking and everything for you. So you can take our examples and basically run with them for your networking environment. So save yourself all the effort, copy our examples and use them for your uh, production environments. Um, essentially what it's doing here is, uh, I've got a playbook called deploy. So that's basically taking a flat file, which is all the device configurations, pushing that out to all the network switches, making whatever change is necessary. Then I'm doing checks on the environment. I'm doing more checks actually here that I'm showing on the slide, but essentially check to make sure that the network is sane and happy in my test environment after that change has been made, right? I haven't broken anything. And then assuming, right, the exit code results from all of that pass, which is the big thing that I'm going to find out shortly, whether or not it did, uh, then go ahead and essentially just rerun that same thing on the production environment as well. So I've got uh, multiple GitLab runners here running in the background, essentially to each of these environments. And then uh, on the production environment, do those same checks as well. Uh, to make sure that everything is sane at the end of my change on the production environment. Now, let's find out whether or not everything's actually worked here. So I'll go ahead and switch on over to this. Um, just as some notes for this, um, this example uh, is a, it's a full leaf and spine architecture with VXLAN, eVPN, multiple devices. This is a very standard typical deployment that our customers do for data center deployments. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's pretty sanitary um, from that standpoint. It doesn't have all the customer ugliness, right, that normally you'd have in your type of environment. Um, we do have uh, certainly much more interesting examples up in um, GitLab, for example. Uh, this one, for instance, is basically just pushing flat files. I'm not taking advantage of any Jinja 2 templates or anything <coughs> like that. Uh, but as people slowly move towards automation, they get to the point of actually trying to do templating. And so we've got great examples essentially of how to try and start actually templating your device configurations so that you can start treating them as roles as opposed to just treating them as individual special snowflakes like uh, most of the time networking devices are treated right now. Um, you can also uh, start, uh, we've got a great example uh, of bringing in device inventory from Netbox as well. Uh, if any of you have worked with Netbox, for example, right? So trying to have invent centralized inventory information uh, and then taking information out of Netbox, having that actually populate your very sensible playbooks and using that as the basis of configuration that gets pushed out to the network. So ask me afterwards, or you can just go Googling and find uh, examples of how to do that. But let's go ahead and we'll stop right there. We'll switch on over. And we will see if, hey, success. So I don't know how many of you have actually seen this in GitLab before. Essentially, this was the automation happening behind the, uh, the scenes. I'll dig into this here a little bit. Zoom on out. So essentially from a build standpoint, I mentioned Vagrant before, 
Essentially what you're doing is I've got a list of devices. I'm passing to Vagrant essentially um, two things, a Vagrant file, and that's actually built using our topology generator. It's basically an open source tool that takes, here's the configuration of the production environment, right? This switch, this port is connected to this switch on this port, right? So the actual physical layout of the network, it kind of serves two purposes. For testing environments, having this text file that describes the physical layout allows you to easily spin up a virtual environment but it also, for any of you that have ever had to try and deal with remote hands and plugging in cables, um, essentially the cumulus switches, you can run a command and say, look at LLDP output, look at the physical interfaces, and tell me all, all my cables plugged in properly, right? And if there's a difference between those two, then tell me exactly what's different, right? The remote hands plug this cable into this switch port, and that's not the switch port they should have plugged it into makes life really, really easy when you're dealing with someone who's halfway across the world making remote uh, infrastructure changes. So the added side effect of moving towards having all this stuff defined is also solving that remote hands problem and being able to just instantly go and double check that everything's actually physically plugged in for you as well. That saves you hours and hours right there. So physical topology file runs through a converter generates out a vagrant file that essentially says boot up these uh, switches and spins up this build environment. At that point, essentially the build environment, this is just the booting of all the switches, configuring the MAC addresses, configuring everything. Um, that's all basic. Um, and then staging actually then is run an Ansible playbook go out there and essentially for all my leaf spine and hosts go out and make sure they're all up and happy um, make sure that they're all properly booted and then essentially go through interface configuration run various ping tests along the way right essentially so push out the configurations through an ansible playbook but then also do a series of unit and system tests here and those system tests are everything from simple ping to um, you know, more complex things like check every one of my BGP neighbor adjacencies and make sure that's up, check that all the MAC addresses still exist so that I know all of my hosts are actually up on the end of the network here as well. And then assuming that everything's happy there, then success from all of that, then essentially tear down the environment because it's no longer needed. Uh, so each one of these switches takes about a gig or two's worth of memory. So you can spin up an entire DC on a server virtually with a server that's running you know, 32, 64 gigs of memory and mimic your entire data center environment and do tests on it. Uh, this entire thing, um, I think if I go back a page here, uh, this took 20 minutes. And that's because I've got very conservative timeouts. So this is spinning up uh, a full test environment, running all my checks, and then finally rerunning that same Ansible playbook out to the production environment. And I've done all that in 20 minutes, and all I've done essentially is just done one git commit to uh, and git push essentially to check this in. So this gives you a lot more confidence at the end of a given network change that actually you're not going to break something uh, along the way. And the nice bit about this is you can take various baby steps uh, to get there, right? You don't have to move towards automating your entire network environment. You can just start off with firewall ACL rules, right? And just verifying, for instance, that your, your um, ACL rules on your various routers and switches are quite happy at first, and then do tests in a CI environment and make sure that works. Uh, and then as the skill sets build up, slowly move towards uh, adding more and more of the network automation pieces here in place. And so I had, just in case, uh, if things hadn't worked, 
I was going to mention to you guys, I'm not sure if you've come across this, um, this package. Um, there is a fantastic um, uh, repo out there you can download called Volkswagen um, that uh, you can see there from the line, right? So it detects if you're running on a CI server and just basically make sure that all your exit codes um, pass. And uh, if, uh, if everything passes, then great, go into production. So I was gonna kick that in in case my demo didn't work, but uh, thankfully everything worked just fine. <laughs> So with that, um, any questions along the way? Uh, a few little bits I'll mention here. Uh, the, I'll make sure that a link, we're recording this presentation. The repo that I'm using here is on GitLab. As I mentioned, there's many, many other repos we have on GitLab and GitHub with all kinds of different network environments, uh, some simple Ansible playbooks to learn. Uh, as well as much, much more complex ones using Jinja 2 templates and everything for more advanced cases on this. But we have some great resources both for the, the network engineers to start learning essentially how to move towards automation, uh, but also essentially uh, for Linux people to start as they move towards networks, right? Um, what is this ugly world of networking uh, and how does it actually work? So we've got some uh, essentially great guides depending on which side of the fence you're coming in and learning from uh, to learn all of this. And for a few of you, um, I do have a few copies of actual physical books, the O'Reilly books that we uh, we put up here of uh, eVPN and the data center as well. So feel free to uh, come up here afterwards and grab a few of those. Any questions?